Alexandria Bay, New York, Uncle Sam Boat Tours. It's the one hour tour of the Million Dollars Row. It's 15th of April. Uh, they, they open early this year because it's nice out. For that to open. What are you doing? What are Fly a drone today before we get any further underway. Real quickly, you do have to go over some safety precautions. First off, where the life vests are and how to put them on. On this boat, on the top deck, you're going to find them on either side of the wheelhouse in these large white bins. On the first deck, you're going to find them in the white bins all the way to the front of the boat in the back. Put them on is very simple. They are all these super stylish and fashionable, reversible yoke style life vests. I'm going to explain one side how to do it, then I'll demonstrate. But basically, you pull them apart at the bottom. Put your head through that shaped hole, <laughs> wrap the strap around your back, looks back to the ring in front. Pretty simple. It should look like look something like this. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, I'm watching. The casino island. And the webcam's up there, remember? Hey, everybody. Yeah. You guys should have went for a boat tour today. It's nice. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Second, safety rule, no smoking on board the vessel, That's which fine. includes any kind of cigarette, cigar, e-cigarettes, vape pens, corn cop pipes, pretty much anything you think of. Not allowed to smoke it on board the vessel today. Me. And lastly, at no place on this boat are any of the seats bolted down. Please do not stand on them. They can and will tip over. Yeah. So that's pretty much it for the safety briefing. Now we can get underway with the tour. Today you guys are on our Millionaire's Road Tour. It's going to take us on an hour trip just through the American section of the St. Lawrence River where you find all the big Gilded Age homes, mansions from the late 1800s, early that. 1900s. First place we're going to see is going to be over here on our left hand side. It's going to be a very large green home called Twin Pines Treehouse. And we got that name because there was originally two of these homes. They stood side by side in a mirror image of each other. Yeah. They were built by best friends and business partners, Abraham Abraham and Nathan Strauss. Abraham actually passed away in that home you see there today. The Strausses unfortunately passed away aboard the Titanic. <laughs> Today's the anniversary of the Titanic. Well, today's the anniversary of the Titanic. <laughs> where, where were you on that one, Molly? <laughs> uh, their home was eventually taken down and the found in disrepair. They owned the A&S department store chain in New York City, which was a very large department store chain in their day. They had children who actually married each other, and they took over the Indian department store chain and turned it into what we know today as Macy's department stores. Over here on our left, the next home is Ooh. Castle Blanca, this white house here. It's gonna get ya. Castle Blanca, owned by the Amsterdam family, is one of the older homes in the region. It still has all of its original furnishings from the 1870s. I like one there. You can actually rent it spend the night there or a weekend. 
They also host several weddings every season. Casablanca. Part of the property is the seawall here with the gargoyles and the lions. These were put here during the Prohibition era. They were afraid of the evil spirits trying to sneak across the borderline in forms of whiskey, wine, and rum. They thought the gargoyles would scare them off. At least that's what they told the authorities. The truth was they used the keyhole structures in the second wall to signal the bootleggers whether or not it was safe to bring the alcohol to shore. And this boathouse here looks pretty brand, pretty much brand new in the older home here. These are actually the same property. This is a property called Winley Lodge, built by Fred and Nellie Frazier from Casanova, New York. It was the last structure to go up here in Millionaire's Row yeah. before the outbreak of World War I. Now the reason the boathouse looks so much new is because the property was purchased by a guy named Don Hazeltine in the 90s. He paid seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the, the pair. He said he really didn't need the boathouse, so he fixed it up, renovated it, sold it off for seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Essentially, getting the home here on the head of the island for almost nothing. Ooh. There's the rock. And because everything's been on the left side of the boat, the next thing is going to be over here on the right side of the boat. Something real special for you guys: the big rock. But this isn't, isn't just any rock, this is Devil's Oven. If you look along the water line, you see a small cave there. That cave is where the river pirate Bill Johnson hit out. He burnt and sank a British steamship called the Sir Robert Peel. He was wanted by authorities on both sides of the borders. This was in the 1830s. He was eventually captured here, tried, and given life sentence in prison. But he only spent about a year in jail prison because he was actually a local hero for his actions. He was given a conditional pardon to become a lighthouse keeper here in the St. Lawrence. The Thousand Islands Bridge. This great home here is the Wawanette, the first structure of the Wawanette. Original, originally a boathouse for this property, converted into a second cabin here. The Wawanette was a real popular hotel and restaurant on this island. It was marketed as a boatel because it was only accessible by way of boat. Pretty clever. Unfortunately, the original structure burned down. The home you see here today sits on the original foundation of the Wawanette. And it sold a couple years ago for about $1.1 million. Oof. Over here on our left hand side, trees, nothing but trees. This is Key Wake State Park. In the summertime, you see campers and hikers like we have here along the shoreline. But it's a little early for them, so it's pretty empty as of yet. Kuwait is the headquarters for all the parks in the St. Lawrence region. They don't have a pool, but we often see, or they do have a pool, they don't have a beach. We often see people jumping off the rocks here on the shoreline and swimming in the summer months. No. This next home on our left hand side is Comfort Island and Comfort Lodge. If you look up to the peak, you'll see a statue of a 600 pound brown bear. It's six feet tall. It's completely made of steel. It's pretty much life size. Part of the weather vane. Put there by the new owners of the property, the Brown family. A company called Brown Bear Productions, the Brown Bear reaching for the sun, was the company logo. And as we continue our turn in the distance, you see the American span of a thousand island bridge system. This is the largest of the bridges that connect the U.S. mainland with the Canadian mainland. The two towers there, about 200 feet off the water. Probably about 150 oh, feet feels good. No. This section of the river we're in, known as the American Narrows. We're now in the main shipping lanes. The big ships come through here. This is one of the most treacherous sections of the river for them to navigate. Because it is so narrow, if you look behind us, the bridge, you can't see it anymore because there's a small bend there. 
and it's difficult for those big ships that are up to 740 feet in length to make that yeah. turn because then they don't allow ships to pass at this point. belong to the U.S. government. This is the port patrol station up there on the hill. The next one is going to be the U.S. Coast Guard station. As you pass by it, we're going to be going 200 feet away from the Roy A. John Reed. The John Reed is a 640-foot no, long ship carrying iron ore into Detroit. You turn it into cars. You don't see it. That's because it's about yes. 200 feet straight down. It sank here in 1974. Work, After striking a shoulder with about a 70 foot hole in the side of the boat, that's about the length of this ship. Hey guys. How did they get the cars there? And the water was coming it's in so fast, lot. they tried to I pump it out for about five hours. I think this is Wisely Island. By the time the captain finally ordered yeah, it, it is. The boat. And they watched it sink to the bottom. It's still down there today. It's considered to be one of the most treacherous dives yeah. in all the St. Lawrence and Great Lakes because of the depth of the water strong currents here in the area. Nice this next big home on our left hand side is Hopewell Hall. One of the older homes in the region, built by a guy named William Browning, made a fortune during the Civil War. Oh yeah. Eventually purchased by George Holt. He gave it to his daughter as a wedding present. She handed it out to her daughter. She lived here till the mid 90s. She actually passed away. She was the last direct descendant of George Bolt and the last Bolt descendant to own property in the Dallas Isles region. Aww. Just last year, that home sold for $3.8 million. That must be nice. This next island is Pullman Out, one of the more historically important ones, at least locally. It was owned by a guy named George Pullman. He had a good friend named Ulysses Escorino. He brought a president his presidency to explore the region. He spent two weeks camping on that island in the 1880s. And within about 10 years of that, millionaires from all over the country had heard about the beautiful area, the great fishing here, and they came here and started buying up these islands. Unfortunately. And building today. One of the straight first islands forward. we built is this next one on our left called Nobby Island. The staircase here connecting these two small islands to the big one was a real popular spot in the 1880s. It was a place to be seen. They had to build a couple of homes here to house all the guests that came out here to spend their time in the Thousand Isles. Most notably, the architectural feature of the main home on top of the island, the stone pillars there all around the porch. Those are individual dry sack stones off the bottom of the river means there's no mortar, no ironwork holding them together. Just the weight of the second yeah. third floor holding them in place. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. We're going straight for a... Uh... Well, I haven't told you guys any real bad straight. tour guide jokes yet, so here we go. This is the worst one we have on the tour. And over here on our left-hand side is Friendly Island. The island's so friendly that if you wave at it, even the fence will wave back at you. Tell people that joke is so bad, it's offensive. I get it. And there's going to be several islands over here on our left hand side. The first one is St. Elmo, then we're going to pass by Florence, Bell, and Imperial. These islands all part of what was considered, what is considered to be Millionaire's Row, where in the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were building these huge wooden homes out here on these islands. In one case, even another castle is no longer there today. Unfortunately, they've all been lost over the past hundred years. Sometimes, the culprit problem out here, especially back in the early 1900s, fire on these islands. 
despite being surrounded by water. They had no kind of firefighting equipment out here on these islands. They didn't have modern fireboats. They would really do anything to get out here if there was a fire. So if a fire did break out on these islands, it was almost always catastrophic to the homes that was there. The other problem was these homes were all built during the Industrial Revolution. People yeah. made millions and millions of dollars real quickly. And then next generation got to experience the Great Depression. So they lost millions and millions of dollars real quickly and they could no longer afford to maintain the lavish homes that were built out here. So sometimes they took them down. In the case of this island over here, Imperial, had its own stone castle on it. Similar to Bold, not nearly as big. But the family, in order to try to keep the property, actually dynamited the castle to lower the property taxes and try to keep the property in the family. for his mother-in-law to show her how much he appreciated her. That's not true. So the first structure we're gonna talk about here is the Ulster Tower. Built by George Bolt, completed in 1899. So the family actually lived on the island in the summer of 1899 after this was completed. It's the only structure that's still there that was really used by the Bolts. He invited and hosted the vice president the Attorney General, and the President would have stayed in August, but he had to cancel his trip due to medical reasons. Next is the main castle, standing six stories high, 124 rooms. Between the peaks, you'll see a statue of a deer or heart, as it was known in George's homeland. It was the most technologically advanced building north of New York City when it was constructed. It's a steel frame building, essentially built like a skyscraper. Yeah. And all electric lights, modern plumbing, indoor swimming pool, and an elevator. Next, the tower. Next to that, it would have been, it would have been a very large greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And to the right of that, you see the statue right there. That is the Italian Gardens today. The British Authority, the owners of the castle, host weddings at this site. Pretty affordable place to get married. Only two hundred dollars to make your reservation. Then you pay for the admission of your guests on the day of the ceremony. And the last structure on the island is the Pepper House, or Pop House, probably the most picturesque building on the island, often one of the most photographed points in the Thousand Islands, this building. It's so castle-like, right up here on the river, but the bolts never would have stepped foot in it. It was completely utilitarian, and in the first floor would have been two steam fire generators, supplied electricity to the main castle, as well as a early diesel engine that operated a large water pump that supplied water to the castle and the grounds. Coming around the back side of the castle here, you know, look at the dovecote Henry where they host those weddings in Italian gardens. Off to the right, you're going to see another pretty large building. This is the Bolt Yacht House. So this was actually completed in 1897 when we first bought this property the summer of 1896. He needed a place to store his boats. He also bought a thousand acres of the island over there, which is Wellesley Island, built a large farm. 
and they used the boathouse to support all the operations. He had a fleet of around 90 boats that made use of this building, or either built here, stored here, including the yacht, the 110 foot long steam yacht, phones. the Louise. You see the big doors in the center, it would actually open up. The Louise would slide right in there. The steeple above it has a telescoping funnel that would come down over the exhaust for the smokestack for the Louise and they could run it inside the building to make sure everything was operating properly before pulling it out of a slip. That building is one of the largest all wooden structures still standing in the world. It is the only yacht house remaining. The only thing built like that from its time period still standing. If you search yacht house, that's going to be the only picture you find. Famously, one of the things George Wolfe did was shape the island into that of a Valentine's Day heart. So right now, the head of the island is the, essentially the top of the heart. You see this arm of duck? That was one corner of the heart. And anyone, any of the guests, the bolts, visiting the island would have come by small boat from the yacht house or from other destinations or from the mainland. They would have entered through the arch here on our left hand side. The arch had the, you see there's a walkway today. Yeah. The original one actually would raise up, like a drawbridge, so small boats could go underneath of it and enter into what's called the swan pond back there, where the bolts would have greeted them. Tower here was the only structure the family actually used on the island, and that is because construction on the main castle began in 1900, and in 1904 it was just months away from being completed. George's wife Louise uh, became ill; she passed away with complications of tuber tuberculosis, pneumonia. George sent a telegram to Alice that stopped all work. Louise has died, and he never returned to this project again. The home sat vacant for about seven decades no real proper maintenance or care. It was sold a couple of times as part of bigger land deals. It was open to tourism, but no one was putting any maintenance into the property. They really didn't know what to do with it. And you have a big building with masonry like that, it doesn't take long for the harsh winters here to really do some damage. And by the 1970s, it was in such bad shape, so unsafe for the people visiting it. New York State was gonna close it down and that's what was given to the South Bridge Authority, the current owners, under the condition that anyone 